Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing a video about a tree called Yopon Holly. You can use the green leaves to make a caffeinated drink out of them. This is America's caffeinated plant, and yet I think it's the most underappreciated caffeinated drink. Thousands of years ago, it was traded all over North America. I'm exploring it now to see if we should... It was probably traded to poison the other tribes. <laughs> we should all be replacing our caffeinated beverages with this plant. Wherever you look, there... You might as well, it doesn't matter. There's so much caffeine in this forest. Yeah, exactly. There's caffeine um, in a lot of forests. Caffeine is a toxin. It should not be seen as anything else. That's what it is, biochemically. And uh, it produces a lot of adrenaline in the body, among other chemicals, which is why you feel like you have energy. You're actually just very adrenalized because of the toxicity. Your body very often responds with uh, adrenaline when it comes to toxicity, and that's because... Uh, you're supposed to have a higher blood pressure. Your blood is supposed to pump more to get the toxicity out of the body and um, to prevent your heart from being damaged. It will still be damaged, but not as severely. That's the reason for this biochemical feeling after consuming anything with caffeine. It's amazing. Yeah, they've been using it probably for as long as there were people here. And the science and scientists that study it showed me why it went out of favor and how we can now bring it back. Realistically, it's probably very disgusting. Coffee made from seeds is also disgusting. That's why most people add sugar or milk to it. You never thought about why you do it? Why most people do it? That's why. It's just very, very disgusting. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Very believable. Look on holy, grow wild and free in the southern heat. If you like foraging for food that's free, and you like caffeine, and... Yes, all of this is free. Look, all of it looks like food to us, to our senses. Green leaves. Amazing. Just go. Have fun. If you like making things that are healthy for you, probably better than the caffeine. Yes, exactly. When I look at these green leaves, I think of health, uh, longevity. It's just pure health, natural food. When you're already drinking, and you live anywhere from Florida to Texas to Delaware, then you need to look no further than this plant, Yopon Holly. It's one of the dominant understory plants here. I've been in Florida for the last year trying to help landowners utilize this amazing area that they live in by making videos about the plants and animals. A recently burns and he's gonna fill us in. It looks like this. Very important. This plant, Yopon Holly, stood out to me because so few people know about the amazing benefits of this plant, its historical use, and the fact that it could be their daily caffeine source. And thanks to my friend. How about you don't consume any caffeine at all? in your day. Gary, a world-renowned entomologist here at the University of Florida, he connected me to the guru. We have the world's expert here on Yopon Holly, he won't say so. This is Yopon Holly. Right this, is, this is Yopon Holly. This was the one that had the highest caffeine content. It's the only native... Ca the higher the caffeine content, the less you should consume it, as in, uh, never. He talks about it as if it's good. The more, the better. Caffeine producing plant in North America. Turns out he was part of a team of scientists that were studying this plant for another project. And then they ran it through their mass spectrometer and discovered that not only did it have the caffeine we knew about, but it had all sorts of other compounds like theobromine and a ton. Theobromine is also a toxin. Are you kidding? Why do you literally name toxins, but talk about it as if it's healthy? If it was healthy, you would simply go up to the tree and start eating the branches, the green leaves, if you were a herbivore, you not being a herbivore already says everything about what you're supposed to consume. Why are you so dumb that you believe that you should put the green leaves inside of water and then try to extract the toxins out of it and then consume it? How does that make it better? If you can't eat it as it is in its raw natural form, then you should obviously not be consuming it at all. ...of antioxidants. And he the antioxidants protect the plant. Come on, man. Just... Oh my God. Explain that even though it's not super common now, it was the caffeinated plant in the Americas. Thousands of years ago, um, it was traded all over North America. How do you know that? There were people who were presumably paddling up the Mississippi. Presumably, presumably, yeah, yeah, yeah. The river with bags of yopon. And oh, okay. So presumably they were traveling with bags of yopon in their boats. Uh, how do you know any of this? Oh, it's just my religion. And yeah, there was also Jesus Christ and blah, blah, blah. The big question is why aren't we using this as much today as we used to? Yopon. 
We never used to use it. It's only the slaves of today that consume caffeine, seeds, plants. Nobody ever used to eat caffeine. The Indians used to drink blood, eat raw animal organs. That's what's actually been recorded. That's what they themselves have also said. They don't consume green leaves. Only stupid modern slaves do that. <laughs> was a very important daily beverage, just like yerba mate is now in the southern cone. It's a close relative, very similar chemistry. More of you probably know about yerba mate. It's in the same genus, Ilex. But unlike yerba mate, some unfortunate events in our history made it an unpopular drink. Yalpan became associated with poor people and Amerindians. Yeah, exactly. Because only poor people would try to extract nutrients, and there aren't even any really, from plants. That's why you would consume it. You would consume tea when you're starving. That's when you would try to boil any kind of nutrients, which would mostly be toxins, out of green leaves and seeds. It's when you have no energy whatsoever and uh, you need to hunt an animal, but you can hardly do it anymore. That's when you would caffeinate yourself, adrenalize your body, destroy your organs, your tissue cells, just to have this adrenaline toxicity in your body to go on. It is for poor people. It is famine food, so-called. So it seems it was partly because of a historical popularity contest in branding. You can literally just go into the woods and pick this, so it wasn't rare, and thus, not cool to drink. I think that is all changing, though, as the popularity of native plants and foraging native things come back into favor. It's something to put on your radar. You can look it up to Yopon Holly. Wow. In fact, in health food stores, you can buy... Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Stuff like this. It's the fanciest thing in the store. But there is still one funny thing about this plant. The name is Ilex vomitoria, and that alone makes it kind of hard to market. Got its reputation and its name, Ilex vomitoria, from a ceremony called the Black Drink Ceremony, practiced by the Timucuans and adopted by the Seminoles after them, and recorded by early ethnographers who came to the area. In the Black Tea Ceremony, they'd take Yopan, crush the leaves, and extract what we would have as a tea, but boil it down until it became a black syrup. Before important events like wars or harvest, there would be a ritual consumption of this highly concentrated extract of Yopan. Often it was accompanied by fasting and sleep deprivation for several days. They would fill their bellies with it and then vomit. Caffeine is an emetic. That concentration of caffeine is no surprise that they would vomit. It was ritual vomiting. Ritual vomiting happens all over the world. I mean, this is something that people do to cleanse themselves. The Anglo-Saxon... Wait, 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 wait. Firstly, that should make you never consume caffeine again when you hear that. Because it's not as if you can consume too much of something that's good for you, that isn't toxic. You can eat a kilogram, two kilograms of meat. You're never going to vomit because it's not toxic for you. But you cannot consume that much black uh, poisonous water <laughs> full of caffeine because it is poisonous for you. It is toxic to the point where you will vomit. And why this assumption that that's why they did it? Did they even do it? Where do all of these religious beliefs come from? Stop with these religious beliefs. Talk about actual reality. It's a green toxic leaf, which you should never consume. Everything else as to what people supposedly used to do is irrelevant, seeing as we cannot prove it. Maybe they created the drinks to poison people. Chroniclers were horrified by this, you know, because they had lost that. In fact, the major distributors of this tea were so concerned that the name would be a problem for consumers that they all banded together, stating that the name was degrading in some way to the people who originally used it in ceremony. Botanists, however, who create these names were not convinced. And so that name still sticks around. But it's important to remember that the ceremonial drinking of the tea was not always how it was consumed. They had it as a daily beverage, too. They called it the white tea drink, and they would uh, whip it. And so it had a froth to it. I have Yaobon daily. It's mm. amazing. And as opposed to coffee, where you have a rush of mm -hmm. awareness and productivity, and then you have a crash and uh, I want to sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't have that after Yaobon. I've always wondered if it was... It doesn't make any sense. If it's simply caffeine, what would be different if it's made from toxic seeds? It's more toxic, maybe, maybe. Seeds are the worst possible food that you can consume. Maybe the green leaves are not as absolutely horrible. Still very toxic for you, though. The balance between the alkaloids. Now let's talk about the different alkaloids, polyphenols, and saponins found in this plant. Theobromine and caffeine are the most popular. They are central nervous system stimulants and energy boosters. <laughs> I love it. I love this wording. Stimulants, central nervous system, stimulants, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they stimulate it because it's toxic. Your body responds to the toxicity. Why don't you literally say 
what has been biochemically proven, instead of using these terms, most people have no idea what you're even saying. Most people don't look into this like I do. Caffeine also contains an antioxidant activity. Additionally, you have theophylline, which is an anti-inflammatory agent and is used for management of chronic obstructive pulmonary Proof. Pulmonary disease. Theocrine has anti-inflammatory and analgesic properties. Polyphenols like chlorogenic acid have antibacterial activity. Oh my God, chlorogenic acid even. Oh my God, man, I can't even. All of it has been proven to be extremely toxic. I even made a video about this. I'll link my video about coffee if you want to look more into this. Oh my god, it's <laughs> I can't anymore. <laughs> it's the same. He's just naming plant toxins. Same as in the seeds. No different. <laughs> and also an anti-obesity and anti-diabetic effect. Flavanols like rutin, camphorol, and quercetin have cardioprotective activities and chemopreventative effects. Proof. Finally, saponin is great as an antioxidant and an antimicrobial. Yeah, for the plants, not for humans or animals. Of course, the magic, so to speak, is that these compounds stack together, making it ideal for mental and physical health. I know some of you now are going to be worried about it. Yeah, exactly. Mental and physical health. That's what you get out of green leaves. Exactly. Totally logical. I love this video. Identification. You're looking for a little shrub with little leaves, about that big, that are alternate on the stem. You see how they alternate? One, two, three, four, right there. Each individual leaf is not smooth on the edges. It's just a little bit wavy. Can't go in. I think that I would f this guy if I was there in real life. Really, it's just, uh, I'm just, uh, oh. To the full identification in a video like this, because it can get a little bit boring. A location on the map out here on the beach, and we went out and filmed a little bit more of it. I'm going to take a quick pause. It literally doesn't matter. It's green leaves. What does it matter where you can find them if our natural human senses try to ignore them? For us, food is red. Or at the very least, from the outside, it looks like an animal. You would for sure not be eating uh, green animals or any green plants. At least a bright green animal is going to be toxic automatically. You know that. You just don't eat that. You don't look for that. When you scan through nature, so to speak, you completely ignore everything that's green. You know that it's inedible. And you focus on the animals, especially... If there's a dead animal already, then you go for the red, the blood, and the meat, and that's what you want to eat. <sighs> in the middle here, if you feel a little bit overwhelmed by the fact that yopon holly is something that seems good for you, but it's out here in the wild, and gosh, there's going to be hard to collect it and dry it and do what you need, I might want to recommend something like Magic Mind. I take this in the mornings. It tastes amazing. This it doesn't taste amazing. Why do you lie? This has green tea, very similar plant. Yeah, green tea is also a toxic green leaf. That's it. That's literally what green tea is. I'm a huge advocate of improving your diet to improve your mental health. How do you improve your mental health with toxic green plants? <laughs> the way you would improve your mental health would be by improving your brain health. And the only way you can do that is by consuming a lot of raw animal foods, especially raw brain. He should be sitting, squatting, whatever he's doing there with a brain in his hand telling people to eat brain if he wants people to be healthy. Instead, he's walking through a forest, not even really, some kind of park, collecting green leaves, talking about mental health. <laughs> the state of humanity today. That's it. He sums it up. Absolute mental illness. Harvesting yopon, you go to a branch and you, you strip the branch off and then you take the Spanish moss out and, and then you have the leaves. Basically, you can either put them in the oven, 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, or you can fry them on a little skillet like this. This helps break down the cell walls and allows the compounds to then get into the tea. Now you have the dry leaves. when they're Technically a good idea if you want to consume toxins. Dry, you crush it up, and you add it to a drink with hot water, just like a green tea. Now, my take on all this is that it seems better than coffee. Not just for the compounds in it, but definitely from an ecological standpoint. You grow coffee mostly in areas that are deforested. And certainly tea, you go in and you clear-cut a montane forest, bulldoze it, and then you plant tea. So that's a tragedy from an environmental standpoint. And then you put it on a ship, you transport it halfway around the world, and you package it, and impact on the environment is very substantial. In contrast, go that's the only good point in the video. If you want to be a slave and consume caffeine, any kind of toxins, then you should better go and uh, pick the green leaves from the tree yourself, of course. Going out into your yard, and I mean it because it's such a common cultivated shrub, and stripping off some leaves, you know, it takes a couple, a big handful to make a, a good um, cup of tea. 
but the plant responds and, and, it, and it's not a problem. It's quite robust. And no shipping, no packaging. And plus you're there in nature doing something and that's just such a wonderful thing in this time of concrete and sterile landscapes. But because this grows both in the wild and as a cultivated shrub, there's potential that it could work its way into the suburbs. I think the only thing stopping everyone from using Yopon Holly is that we still retain this fear of harvesting wild foods. I also think we hold on to this idea that nature's out there and we're... The children look like they have messed up teeth, um, probably underdeveloped jaws simply because of what the father is feeding them. I guess it, it was his children. If he feeds them uh, some kind of plants and whatever, that's what happens. Here, we should absolutely not touch it, because if you keep that mentality, the separation of nature, then you can't enjoy this connection we could be having with the nature all around us. It is such an easy way to have a ceremony with nature. I hope now you are convinced. That makes zero sense. No human being in nature would ever actually consume that. It's just completely illogical. To, to try, at the very least, Yopon tea. And if you're a landowner in the south, in other words, you own some sort of land anywhere where this is found, then maybe you could have it on your property and you could harvest tea every day. How cool would that be? I hope this doesn't sound like Shut an the ad up. for Yopon tea. Sometimes I get really excited about new things that I find. I am being supported at the moment uh, as the sponsor of this series by Magic Mind. I will be actually going through all of the ingredients in here, which have health benefits, uh, all of them supported by science. I'm very Oh, of course, yeah. It's supported by science, just like eating green leaves. Totally excited about being sponsored by a company who believes in health and diet. We're going to be diving into the health benefits of all of these different plants um, and mushrooms and different nutrients that you could be adding to your diet for over the next year, probably. So I'm very excited about that. So we'll see you in another video. This video actually very well sums up what's going on with humans today. There's people out there who believe that green leaves are food, or at the very least, that they help you with your brain health. They couldn't possibly explain to you how, obviously, but they religiously believe this. Every study ever shows you that caffeine, theobromine, all of these antioxidants are toxins. They literally have a toxic response in your body. <laughs> That's why your body becomes adrenalized. <laughs> That's it. It's just very simple. There's absolutely no health benefits to eating green leaves, which they thankfully didn't do, at least directly or by soaking them in hot water and by extracting the toxins from the green leaves. I'm thankful that they didn't actually try to eat the green leaves or try to juice them, even though it's pretty much what they did by soaking them in the hot boiling water. <laughs> but if you would tell them to juice the green leaves, then they would say, no, uh, that's too much. No, that's not what we should be doing but then you try to get the toxins out of the green leaves. What's the difference? Why not just chew on the green leaves? No, then you don't do that because that tastes way too toxic for you. But um, if you soak them and get some of the toxins out of them, then it's bearable. And then you add some sugar to it and then you believe that you're consuming something healthy. In their raw natural form, no, we don't do it. Adding some sugar with some of the toxins? Yeah, that's healthy. It's for my mental health. <laughs> How well can your mental health be if you believe that consuming green leaves is good for your mental health? And it just says everything. Thanks for watching, guys.